Hello everybody, in this video we're going to continue looking at modeling using image planes in Maya. In my previous video I modeled a vase using a single image plane, but what if I want to model something more complicated? For instance, my stovetop coffee maker. Here are the three image planes I'll be using. Notice how when the images are placed side by side, the features line up. In my front viewport, I'm going to go to View, Image Plane, Import Image Plane, and navigate to the image of my coffee maker from the front. And to help me model the side, I will go to the side viewport and also go to View, Image Plane, Import Image Plane, and find the appropriate image for this view. And because my coffee maker has a distinct eight sided shape, uh, that can be seen from the top view, I will apply an image plane to that viewport as well. While my three image planes are a little bit difficult to see right now because they are overlapping one another, uh, you'll notice how this will be an excellent template for modeling this three-dimensional form. You'll remember from the previous video that there were a few steps I took to make it easier to work with my image planes. I'm going to select each one of my image planes and move them further away from the cameras that they are associated with. Remember that we're working in orthographic views here, so the images themselves, even though they are further from the camera, do not appear smaller. With the image plane that has been assigned to the top viewport selected, I'm going to go to the Attribute Editor, and I'm going to bring down its alpha gain. This will make it semi-transparent. I will also select Looking Through Camera. Telling the image plane to look through camera simply makes it visible in only one viewport. I'll now do the same steps to the front viewport image plane and to the side viewport image plane. And opening up my outliner, I will select all three of my image planes and I'll assign them to a layer in the channel box. You'll remember from the previous video that this makes it easy for me to hide and unhide these image plane templates, as well as to make them unselectable by flagging them as references. Now that I have my image planes set up, I'm ready to start modeling. Because this coffee maker has a very distinctive eight-sided form, I'm going to create a cylinder and I will set it to be eight-sided. And so that I can see my image plane through the mesh, I'm going to go to Shading X-Ray. Switching over to my front viewport, I'll size the mesh accordingly. And I will also turn on X-Ray in that viewport as well. I've also just added some subdivisions on the height. Having switched over to the side viewport, I also turn on X-Ray mode in that viewport as well. As you watch me model this stovetop coffee maker, you'll notice that I will constantly be switching from the front viewport to the side viewport to the top viewport, as well as checking the perspective viewport to make sure that the model is coming out as I intend. I'm using the multi-cut tool to add edge loops right now, and then taking those edge loops and scaling them in to uh, better describe the form of this coffee maker. And if I look at the side view, I see that there's the spout, which the coffee's poured out of. I'm selecting the faces to make sure I know where the spout should be, and I'm adding an edge loop. Now, using my multi-cut tool, I'll just cut a couple new edges so that I can start creating the form 
for the spout. And here's the beginning of the spout for my coffee maker. I'm going to select the faces on the top of the coffee maker and delete them. And to create the interior, I'll do an extrude. Going to Mesh Display Reverse will fix the normals. It'll make the normals face outward. My eight-sided coffee maker has a very faceted, hard-edged look to it. But there are areas that have smooth surfaces as well. I can choose to harden or soften an edge by going to Mesh Display. What you are seeing me do here is selecting edges and either defining them as hard-edged or soft-edged. I'm going to select a few of the edge loops on my coffee maker and apply a bevel to them. To create the top of the coffee maker, I will make another eight-sided cylinder. With it properly placed and sized in the top viewport, I'll switch over to the side viewport and work with it there as well. When working with the scale tool in your orthographic views, you have to be very conscious of whether you're doing a uniform or non-uniform scale. All the scales I've been doing with this model have been uniform scales. In other words, I've scaled it equally on all three axes. But if I were modeling a human torso from the front and side views, I'd want to use non-uniform scales. I'm going to select the faces on the bottom of the lid and do an extrude. And in my side viewport, I'll carefully place the lid on top of the coffee maker. And finally, I'll move on to the handle. I'll also create the handle starting with a polygon primitive cylinder. Notice how I create the handle through a series of extrudes. Remember that if you're unsure of any of these tools that I'm using in this video, you can watch some of my previous videos where I go over these different tools and techniques. With the handle selected, I'm going to go to Mesh Display, Soften Edge. And now I'm pretty much finished with the modeling of this coffee maker. And this is a perfect time to point out something very important. With my mesh selected, you'll notice that I have a number of inputs. This is the history, all the actions I have done to create this mesh. Notice as I select the other two objects, they also have a history. I can get rid of this history by going to Edit, Delete by Type, History. Notice that the object I have selected now no longer has a long list of history. I'm going to delete the history on the other two objects as well. Under some circumstances, you may want to have some history. But in most situations, it's better to periodically delete it. Usually, you can't do anything with the history that's been built up anyway. And with too much history built up on a mesh, they sometimes go corrupt. And while I'm tidying up my scene, I'm going to go ahead and freeze the transformations on my meshes. Remember to do that, that you select the mesh and go to Modify, Freeze Transformations. And to finish off this model, I'm going to create two materials, one for the metal surfaces and the other for the plastic handles.
Having good reference material makes modeling objects as well as characters much easier. When modeling my stovetop coffee maker, I used three image planes, a top view, a front view, and a side view. And this made visualizing the 3D form very easy. And that's that for modeling a stovetop coffee maker using three image planes. Before wrapping up this video, let's take a look at one scenario that is very common for using image planes, and that is modeling a character. Here I have a front and side view of a character. Notice that when the images are side by side, the features line up. You may be surprised to find out that this model also began as an eight-sided cylinder just like the coffee maker. And the arms and legs were created using extrudes. And like the coffee maker, creating this model required switching from viewport to viewport and making the necessary adjustments. Using image planes made modeling this 3D form easy. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.